So I thought today I'd get to work on the wheels. Um, I'm going to start off with making the flanges for the bearings just because that seems like an easy spot to start and it's probably the part that's going to take the longest amount of time. So I've got four of these bearings. They're 52mm on the outside and 25 on the inside and I've also got a 25mm shaft that this fits on perfectly. So I guess this might be 25 point something on the inside. The problem is 52mm on the outside, the hole that my hole saw can cut easily is 51mm. It's literally just 1mm too small and it's too tight for me to squeeze it through. If I try and squash this through here, it's going to break the wood. Um, I'm not putting it into this wood, but on a thicker piece, it's just going to damage everything. So I need to make a bigger hole. So this is only a cheap hole saw, so I don't mind if I destroy it, to be honest. Um, I bought it in a pack of, you know, I've got a bunch of different sizes and it's never really been all that good. So you can see here from outside tooth to outside tooth is, well, it should be 51. That's the hole that it leaves. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is just bend out a few of these teeth and then cut it again and hopefully we've got a perfect size hole. I think that's the easiest way of getting the exact size that I need. So as luck would have it, that actually worked. I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised and impressed. Um, I tried it once and the hole was a little bit too big so I just tightened up some of the teeth and now I've got a nice snug fit. Um, this is only 3 mil MDF, so once I put it into the actual the thick stuff, I think it's about uh, 12 or 16 mil the stuff I'm going to use. So that's going to be more than enough to hold it in there forever. to make the wheels for the bandsaw. So I've got two blanks glued together and um, what they are is 16mm MDF and 12mm MDF so it's about three centimeters thick. Two of those and then on the router I've got a very crude uh, circle jig and all it is is basically I'm going to put a pin through here through the center of the wheel blank and then spin it around and hopefully end up with a wheel with a diameter of uh, 40 centimeters and that's what we're going to do right now.
So the circle jig worked great, but it was a little bit fiddly to work with at times. So I was having fun just uh, looking at the wheels and seeing how good they were and you know, I was happy that they came out pretty much perfect. So I decided to drop one on the floor. It's not too bad, it's just a bit of a gouge on the side. I think I'll probably have to sand that out later on anyway, so that doesn't matter too much. But the system worked, I've got two wheels and I'm ready to move on. I probably could have come up with a better method of centering the flange on the wheel, but this seemed to work. I basically, the flange was a perfect square, the circle was a perfect circle, so I just made sure that it was sort of the same distance from the center of it to the edge of the wheel on each side. Um, it worked near enough, but I could have done a little bit better job. This part took a lot longer than what it shows in the video. It's basically put it on, move it a little bit, wiggle things around a bit more and make sure everything was straight. Um, all I was really going for was so that the wheel sort of ran true and I didn't really care. Like you can see that it's not exactly centered there, but the main thing is the wheel doesn't wobble side to side from this angle here. Um, that's pretty much what I was going for because I can. the wheel is slightly oversized, so I'll be able to sand it down to a perfect circle again. I just wanted to make sure that everything was sort of flat, I guess, when it was on the wheel. So after taking my time and uh, doing everything nice and slow, I managed to get two wheels that ran true, sort of. All I've got to do is uh, spin them down to size. So to do that, I've got to go dig out the motor that I'm going to use, which is on this terrible old table saw that I used to have. So this has been out in the garden shed for the last oh, three years, ever since I bought the big table saw. Um, it's a pile of rubbish, but the motor did seem to be pretty cool. Um, it probably won't be strong enough to run the bandsaw long term, but this is definitely what's going to go in it at the start. So let's take it apart. Success. So that's essentially where I am now. Um, you can see from the mess out here, I've had a bunch of different projects the last couple of weeks and then I've had I've been working on the weekends and uh, it, this is our sort of patch of the year when everyone's got a birthday. 
that sort of thing. So we've, I've just been really busy and I haven't had a chance to get to work on the pulley or anything for the motor. But I'm having some issues with that anyway, so maybe someone can help out. I've got no issues with making the actual pulley. I'm just going to make it out of probably uh, plywood, maybe MDF if that's strong enough, not really sure. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. But the issue I have is how do I mount it to the shaft coming out of the motor? Um, I was thinking I would use one of the fittings that were originally on here to hold the blade. Um, it's just made of aluminium. I drilled a few holes through it, made a crude um, pulley which I screwed onto here. But because I'm a bit of a fool, uh, when I was making the hole for the pulley a little bit larger because it was a bit too small, I accidentally uh, rubbed the drill bit up against this. So the two flat spots that are on the shaft here, I've managed to make them a lot wider. So now when I put it on, there's a whole lot of wobble and it's not tight anymore. So this is basically useless now. So what I have is there's a round shaft here. It's got two flat parts on it. Um, I know nothing about motors and fittings and stuff, so that's why I'm asking. Um, a thread at the front, which I've got the nut for, and that's it. How do I attach a pulley there? If anyone's got a video or a blog or something like that that can help me out, I would really appreciate it. Um, I did mention the issue I was having with the shaft and the pulley and all that on Facebook a week or two ago, so I've got a few suggestions from people who saw that, so thanks for that guys. Um, if I've got a bit of time today, hopefully I can actually give those ones a shot and see what happens. Um, other than that, I think this video has probably gone on long enough, so I'll probably call it quits right about here. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't think it really did too much, but oh well. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all that sort of stuff. Cheers, guys.